वेणुगोपाल सफिशियंट हो गया ट्रीटमेंट <laughs> Madam Speaker, I want to share my views with the honourable members the, about the World Bank report. The latest World Bank report has said that the Indian economy has become world's sixth biggest economy, pushing France to the seventh position. It is stated that the new calculations were arrived at on the basis of performance of the Indian economy during the 2017. Be that as it may. What is the real position of Indian economy? Who are contributing to India's growth Please GDP in real terms? People. India's GDP is dependent mainly on five to six states, which contribute in major way. The major contributors to the national GDP are the following states. Maharashtra is leading with 14 percent of the share to the GDP, followed by Tamil Nadu, UP. Gujarat and Andhra Pradesh, each contributing 8% to the GDP. Then followed by West Bengal with 7% and Karnataka with 6%. All other states are very major contributors. That being so, what is that we are getting in return? In partly, in partly we are gasping for breath in terms of our share of money from the centre, about which I will narrate now. Let me first take up the unpaid claims. There is a long pending request of the state government of Tamil Nadu to release pending amounts due to from various union minister under several centrally sponsored scheme. It is observed that many ministers have gone back on their commitments on unconvincing grounds. Due to this, there is a total unpaid claim of amount of rupees six thousand sixty six. 0.5 crore, which is adversely affecting the resource of the state government, leaving the state with high revenue deficit. One of the claims, amounting of rupees 522 crore, relates so as old as the grants of the 13th Finance Commission. The ministry was pending claims had been listed out by the Honourable Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu in his letter dated 11/4 2018 to the Honourable Prime Minister. Honorable Chief Minister has written two more letters on 14/6/2018. In one letter, he described the flight of the post SC and ST students who are admitted at the management quota in higher and technical education institutes in the state. Since the centre has revised the guidelines for the post domestic scholarship scheme since April 2018, several students belonging to the communities have been severely affected. I would like to proudly say that Tamil Nadu has highest enrollment ratio in the higher education in the country of more than 45 percent solely because of the scholarship provided to them. Government of Tamil Nadu is effectively implementing the centrally sponsored scheme for the welfare of the scheduled costs and scheduled types, and due to committed liability, the finance of the state government had been. Put to a lot of stress, the state is yet to re receive an amount of rupees thousand eight hundred three point four crores sir, arrears of the up to 2017-18 from the government of India. I request the centre to immediately release this centrally assistance to Tamil Nadu. Through the second letter, on the same day, the honourable chief minister brought to the notice of the honourable prime minister the serious financial constraints. 
the urban and rural local bodies are facing due to the non-release of second installment of 14th Finance Commission's basic grant. Due to the court case regarding the elections to the local bodies, the second installment is not released by the centre. This is depriving the urban and rural local bodies from the discharging their basic civic functions. It is pertinent to point out here that the 14th Finance Commission did not say that the funds should be released only if the elections were held for urban and rural local bodies. Madam Speaker, hence I request the government to immediately release the second installment of basic grant of rupees 1,390 crore and the performance grant of rupees 560 crore to the urban and rural local bodies for the year 2017-18 and also the first installment of basic grant of rupees 1608 crore for the year 2018-19 in the case of grants and in aid for implementing various centrally sponsored schemes tamil nadu witnessed a huge downturn which is not the case with other similarly placed states without going to how much other states got i would like you to say tamil nadu had a shortfall of rupees 570 crore this year as a grants in aid from the center. Though the Union Finance Minister claims that the share is devolution of the central link taxes has been increased to 42%. In reality, the effect has been neutralized by the reduction in the horizontal devotionary share of central taxes from 4.969% to 4.023%. This is the highest erosion in share among, among this, the, all the states. Hence, the combined effect of Tamil Nadu's overall share in central taxes has increased only marginally from 1.59% to 1.69%. The 14th Finance Commission had adopted an unfair and unscientific formula which signaled out a welfare state Tamil Nadu. We feel that Tamil Nadu has been penalized for the state's achievement in economic development and population control. The government of Tamil Nadu requested the center to provide an annual special grant of rupees 2,000 crore each year for the remaining period of the 14th Finance Commission, which is acceded to so far. I request the government to kindly consider and accede to this demand. Madam Speaker, due to the repeated punishment and unfair treatment meted out to Tamil Nadu by successive finance commissions for achieving higher growth, we requested, the, we requested a change in the terms of reference of the 15th Finance Commission so that the due weightage is given to the best performing states like Tamil Nadu. Coming to the GST, it has been implemented more than a year ago. The country has to understand the impact of implementation of the GST in India over the last one year. I would like to point out that Tamil Nadu has been one of the best performers after introducing the GST. But there is going to be a significant shortfall in the settlement amounts due to Tamil Nadu under the new GST regime. I request the government to consider and rectify the abbreviations. Coming to the bills, we are here that the Ministry of HRD has prepared a draft bill for setting up of higher, edu higher education commissions replacing the old AJ University Grant Commission. The government of Tamil Nadu is of the view that the existing institutional arrangement of the UGC with the regulatory and financial power is functioning quite well. So, and as such, there is no need to disband the University Grant Commission by replacing it with the Higher Education Commission. In the proposed bill, the financial powers are supposed to be transferred to the Ministry of HRD. All of us have been apprehension in this regard. So, we oppose the proposed bill and feel that the present framework of University Grants Commission should be allowed to continue. We also hear from the government that it proposes a bill which was approved by the Union Cabinet on 13 6, 2018. This House may recall that a similar bill was introduced during the UPA regime in 2010. This, that bill was subjected by the then Chief Minister, Honorable Dr. Jailalitha. Fortunately, it did not see the light of the day. Now, the present draft dam safety bill is violating the rights of Tamil Nadu. In this regard, 
the Tamil Nadu Assembly had adopted a unanimous resolution on 26-6-2018 that urged the central government to take up the legislation only after consulting the states. The resolution also urges that still the time <coughs> there is a consensus this should be kept in abeyance. In a view of the above, I request the government not to bring forward this bill. This bill is not going to affect the Tamil Nadu but other states as well. Firstly, the centre must resolve all the interstate river water disputes before bringing this dam safety bill. Madam Speaker, women's safety, mob lynching, etc. are very important issues that plague the nation. A global report in one of its surveys mentioned that India is the world's most dangerous country for women. The reason for this is illiteracy, unemployment and drugs. The drug addiction is the major problem. The centre cannot wish away by saying that it is the state subject and it is the responsibility of the states to take care of the menace. I would like to point out that the state do not procure or produce drugs. The drugs are being illegally smuggled into the country through the porous international borders. Safeguarding the international borders is the responsibility of the centre and hence the centre should pay much attention to seal the porous borders so that drugs are not smuggled in. Mob lynching is another issue which needs to be paid sufficient attention so that it does not take place in any part of the country. Women Reservation Bill is pending for a long time and this is the right time that we take up the bill for consideration and passing with consensus. Madam Speaker, Ma speaker, uh, Ma Deputy Speaker, sir, we are much obliged that thankful to the Indian government led by Honorable Prime Minister Modi ji what is this? The, and the what? Indian Judiciary for having constituted a coverage management, management board. It is affecting you, <laughs> but it is uh, for us. <laughs> <laughs> The, the former CM, Dr. Prachit Ali Amma, took a lot of efforts and sacrificed a lot for constituting the Kaveri Management Board. At the same time, I request the government to see that the monthly release of water from the Karnataka is properly monitored as mandated by the Supreme Court without any itches for the sake of farmers of Tamil Nadu. Honorable Deputy Speaker, sir. If the government does not pay immediate attention to the aspects that I raised, people of the country and more especially the people of Tamil Nadu may lose their confidence in the central government. So I would like to iterate there must be a cordial relations between the centre and states. The present ADMK government in Tamil Nadu has been following the footsteps of earlier government headed by Dr. MGR and Dr. Purushit Amma and the functioning effectively for the cause of the people of Tamil Nadu. We are going to face the people in less than a year from now. We are from our party, the ADMP feel that the people who are the real masters will decide and give their verdict in 2019. So with this word, I conclude and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Sir.